CNN has learned that President Trump also leaned on Australia's prime minister for assistance. A source telling our Evan Perez that the president wanted the Australians to help with the Justice Department probe into the origins of the Mueller investigation. And Evan, you're joining us now. Um, we talk about the Ukraine call. That's about a future election. Right. This is about discrediting the origins of the Mueller report, which looked into the past election. Right, exactly. And this is why uh, certainly the Justice Department now is, is openly acknowledging that this happens. They say uh, that this has to do with, uh, with uh, the attorney general's investigation that's being done uh, to look at what happened in 2016. And they look at it as certainly looking at what may have been foreign election interference in the 2016 election. And that includes uh, intelligence that may have come from Ukraine and from other countries that was used uh, essentially against candidate Trump. And that, that became obviously the Mueller investigation. And so uh, we're told that uh, the attorney general has asked the president to help essentially uh, prod other governments to cooperate with this investigation. And it's not just Australia, but there are a number of other countries that we know of that provided intelligence to, uh, to what became the Mueller investigation. That includes the United Kingdom, that includes the Netherlands, that includes uh, Italy, Cyprus, uh, any number of countries that provided information that ended up in that investigation, that ended up in the Mueller probe, uh, you can bet those are the countries that they're targeting. And so we have a statement now from uh, Kerry Kupek, the uh, spokeswoman for, uh, for Attorney General Barr, and he, she says, quote, at Attorney General, Barr's, uh, Attorney General Barr's request, the president has contacted other countries to ask them to introduce the Attorney General and Mr. Durham, that's John Durham, the prosecutor who's doing this investigation, to appropriate officials. They are pretty open about it. And so I think what people might be surprised to learn is that there's sort of some latitude, right, for the U.S. government to ask for help uh, from allies when it comes to investigations. The Ukraine thing is different, though. People, the observers, the DOJ, they, they see that differently? Uh, they do see the difference, obviously, because the president on that on the call that the transcript of which was released last, last week, you hear the president saying to the Ukrainian president that he wants help essentially for dirt on his prospective possible rival in the 2020 election. That makes that's a huge difference because everybody, I think the Democrats are certainly looking at it as uh, you're trying to get foreign help on a future election, which is exactly what uh, they say happened in 2016 as well still a little, you know, stinky, right? The idea of going to a foreign government to discredit this, what seems to be a valid origin of, of an investigation. Right, even people around President Trump defend the origins of this investigation. Uh, but the, look, I think you have a different crew at the Justice Department now. Attorney General Barr has had some skepticism about this and he's been very open about that. He has been. All right, Evan Press, thanks so much for the reporting and breaking that down for us. Let's discuss all of the latest news with Congressman Jerry Connolly of Virginia. He is a key member of the Oversight Committee and the Foreign Affairs Committee. Sir, thanks for being with us. Great to be with you, Brianna. So you've you heard this reporting from The Washington Post that the attorney general has held private meetings overseas with foreign intelligence officials looking for their help in this effort to investigate the beginnings of the Russia probe, which turned into the Mueller probe. Um, how do you think foreign officials are viewing this effort? What would your concerns be? Um, I hope they would view it with horror and would not cooperate, would try to stay out of it. <clears throat> the last thing in the world we need is more foreign interference with our domestic political situation. This is unprecedented. The Attorney General of the United States investigating a special prosecutor who reported to him and the origins of his special report. Um, you know, that, that's unheard of and it's improper. And quite frankly, I think the attorney general needs to resign. He is no longer even pretending to be objective in uh, the uh, meeting out of justice in the United States. He is nothing but a private uh, you know, investigator and attorney for Donald J. Trump, and that's not his constitutional role. Let's talk about the latest information that we have on this call with Ukraine's president, which is the subject of this whistleblower complaint as the president, according to the memo of the call, asked the president of Ukraine essentially to dig up dirt on Joe Biden as the president was freezing aid uh, to, the, to the nation. Um, what questions does this raise for you about Mike Pompeo? Because we've just learned that he was actually on the call. Well, I think when you look at the juxtaposition of, of conversation, 
Um, right after the Ukrainian president says, we need that military aid you've suspended and cited specific kinds of military aid to be able to protect themselves against Russian incursion in the eastern part of the country, Donald Trump says, well, we need your help on something, though. In other words, before we get to that, which I've suspended, that military aid, you need to do me a favor. And um, the fact that the Secretary of State overheard that and, and didn't act on it and thought apparently it was okay is very troubling because that constitutes extortion. The president was clearly extorting something, a private, personal, partisan request uh, to dig up dirt on a prospective political opponent and is willing to suspend military aid desperately needed by uh, a country trying to establish democracy and fight the Russian incursion is deeply troubling. And the fact that it was overheard by the Secretary of State really is, is something I don't think any American would count on it. So on the flip side, um, you suggested if he heard it, maybe he thinks that was okay. What if he heard it and Mike Pompeo does not, did not think that it was okay? then he needs to come forward. An impeachment inquiry is underway. This is serious business. This is about protecting the interests of the United States, our national security, and frankly, our, our, our democratic norms and institutions. Where is Mike Pompeo if he heard that and has so far done nothing? At least one brave individual has come forward, the whistleblower. He needs to be protected, not ferreted out, not unveiled, not put at risk. The president has threatened to do all of that. That's wrong, and it's also illegal. Your committees, Oversight and Foreign Affairs, have joined with the Intel Committee to subpoena Rudy Giuliani, the president's personal lawyer, for documents that have to do with Ukraine. What happens next if Rudy Giuliani doesn't comply when we look at past lessons from, say, the Obama administration Justice Department where dealing with issues like this can take years in court. What do you do if he just ignores you guys? I am a passionate advocate for reviving what's called inherent contempt where Congress can enforce its own subpoenas. Um, and, and in doing that, we can find Mr. Giuliani. We can go to the bar and have him request that he be disbarred uh, so that he can't practice law anymore. And ultimately, we could even put him in jail. Um, I think Mr. Giuliani is putting himself at grave risk if he defies these subpoenas, which are very specific and very detailed. They go back over a two-year period. Uh, and if he doesn't cooperate with those subpoenas, I think he's going to find himself in grave legal jeopardy. Does Speaker Pelosi share your view when it comes to Congress enforcing its own subpoenas? She does not, as far as I know. She has, she has kind of dismissed that out of hand. But I, I believe there's a growing chorus uh, among Democrats, both in rank and file Democrat voters and also members of the caucus who believe, but we're not getting cooperation on the enforcement of subpoenas. And as you said, Brianna, you know, judicial enforcement can take a long time. We don't have a long time. The and so I think we have to look at other remedies at our command. Uh, the president says he's now trying to find out who this whistleblower is. This whistleblower who is supposed to be protected uh, their identity is supposed to be protected uh, by law. Are you worried about the safety of this whistleblower? I am. For the President of the United States, and remember, what preceded that, that uh, twit, tweeter uh, was uh, the President saying, um, this is like a spy, and you know what we did with spies. We executed them. Uh, that is really reckless language. That puts this whistleblower at risk. Uh, given the climate in the country, the fact that some people are on edge anyhow, uh, he has deliberately chosen to put the life and security of this whistleblower at risk. Under the law, whistleblowers are protected. They're protected in terms of their identity and certainly their security. And the president has violated that law with that uh, tweet. And I think it's uh, you know a new low for a president that seems to have uh, no bottom in terms of new lows.